NSO on national income should provide greater clarity, enabling more specific projections of GDP growth in terms of both magnitude and direction. Much will depend on how quickly the COVID curve flattens and begins to moderate. As the nation prepares for this future, the words of Mahatma Gandhi should inspire us to fight on. I quote, we may stumble and fall, but shall rise again, unquote. The MPC is of the view that the macroeconomic impact of the pandemic is turning out to be more severe than initially anticipated. Beyond the destruction of economic and financial activity, livelihood and health are severely affected. Judging that the risks to growth are acute, while the risks to inflation are likely to be short-lived, the MPC believes that it is essential now to instill confidence and ease financial conditions further. This will facilitate flow of funds at affordable rates and rekindle investment impulses. It is in this context that the MPC voted to reduce the policy, reverse, the policy repo rate by 40 basis points from 4.4 to 4%. If the inflation trajectory evolves as expected, more space will open up to address the risks to growth. Now I now turn to some regulatory and development uh, policy announcements. The regulatory and developmental measures which we announced today, they are being done to complement and amplify the reduction in the policy repo rate decided by the MPC. As I have said earlier, the RBI has been constantly monitoring the situation. We are extremely uh, careful and uh, very, uh, you know, it, uh, the, at the level of the level of vigilance is at its highest, is at its peak in RBI. My, our entire team of officers are closely monitoring the developments in various segments of the economy. And you would have seen that over the past uh, two or three months, as and when it was warranted, the RBI has not waited for a formal statement to be made by the governor, but we have been taking policy measures. And as and when, uh, you know, as and when the situation warrants, to the best of our ability, we are reacting to situations, we are trying to anticipate and also trying to be proactive and that shall continue to be under the underlying theme of our approach. In my statement at the time of MPC meeting in February 2020, I had pointed out the increasing downside risks to global growth in the context of the outbreak of coronavirus, the full effects of which were still un uncertain and unfolding at that time. That is in the first week of February. Since then, RBI has proactively managed liquidity conditions, expanding its array of measures, both conventional and unconventional. In the meantime, the monetary policy transmission to banks' lending rates has also continued to improve significantly. I have some details about the transmission of policy rates in, in the various segments of the uh, financial markets. I have also data about the transmission of the policy rate to the new fresh loans being sanctioned by the banks. I am not reading them out. They are content in my statement. Those who are interested may please have a look at the statement which will be uploaded immediately after uh, my, this statement uh, on the television and in the YouTube is over. The decision of the MPC to reduce the policy repo rate and maintain the accommodative stance of monetary policy provides the opportunity for the RBI to announce certain additional measures against the backdrop of a deteriorating outlook for economic activity. These policy actions complement and strengthen each other in intent and reach. The measures being announced today can broadly be delineated under four categories. One, measures to improve the functioning of markets and market participants. Two, measures to support exports and if imports. Three, efforts to further ease financial stress caused by COVID-19 disruptions by providing relief on debt servicing and improving access to working capital. And four, steps to ease financial constraints faced by the state governments. I first take up measures to improve the functioning of markets.
The RBI had earlier announced a special refinance facility of 15,000 crore to SIDBI at RBI's policy repo rate for a period of 90 days for, its, for the lending and refinancing operations of uh, the SIDBI. In order to provide greater flexibility to SIDBI, it has been decided to roll over the facility at the end of the 90th day for another 90 days. The next point relates to investments by the foreign portfolio investors, that is FPIs under the voluntary retention route of the RBI. Since its introduction, the voluntary retention route scheme has evinced strong investor participation with investments exceeding 90% of the limits allotted under the scheme. In view of the difficulties expressed by FPIs and their custodians on account of COVID-19 related disruptions in adhering to the condition that at least 75% of allotted limits be invested within three months, it has been decided that an additional three months time will be allowed to FPIs to fulfill this requirement. The next set of measures relate to our effort to support exports and imports. The deepening of the contraction in global activity and trade accentuated by rapid spread of COVID-19 has crippled external demand. In turn, this has impacted India's exports and imports, both of which have contracted sharply in the recent months. In view of the importance of exports and imports to the economy, certain measures are being taken to support the foreign trade sector. The first measure relates to export credit. In order to alleviate genuine difficulties being faced by exporters in their production and realization cycles, it has been decided to increase the maximum permissible period of pre-shipment and post-shipment export credit, sanctioned by the banks from the existing one year to 15 months for disbursements made up to July 31st, 2020. The next measure relates to liquidity facility for the Exim Bank of India. In order to enable the Exim Bank to meet its foreign currency resource requirements, it has been decided to extend a line of credit of rupees 15,000 crore to the Exim Bank for a period of 90 days with rollover of up to one year so as to enable it to avail a US dollar swap facility. Next measure relates to extension of time for payment for imports. With a view to providing greater flexibility to importers in managing their operating cycle in a COVID-19 environment, it has been decided to extend the time period for completion of outward remittances against normal imports, that is excluding import of gold, diamonds and precious stones and jewelry into India from six months to 12 months from the date of shipment of such imports made on or before July 31st, 2020. The next set of measures relate to measures to uh, ease the financial stress. The RBI had earlier on two separate occasions on March 27th and on April, uh, April 17th when I made uh, statements uh, in the media. Uh, the RBI had announced uh, you know, on both these occasions uh, certain regulatory measures pertaining to granting of three months moratorium on term loan installments. That is the first one we had announced. Two, deferment of interest for three months on working capital facilities. Three, easing of working capital financing requirements by reducing margins or reassessment of working capital cycle. Three, exemption from being classified as defaulter in supervisory reporting and reporting to credit information companies. Five, I think one, two, three, four, five, I'm just listing out, it's possible that it missed to, you know, that exemption probably was number five, ex exemption from being classified as defaulter. I think that was four. The fifth point is extension of resolution timelines for stressed assets. And the sixth point was asset classification standstill by excluding the moratorium period of three months. So all these measures we have announced on uh, 27th of March and on April uh, uh, 17th, essentially arising from, you know, this three months time we gave uh, three months moratorium we allowed on the term loans, then on working capital we allowed certain relaxations and associated measures. In view of the extension of the lockdown and continuing disruptions on account of COVID-19, the above measures are being further extended by another three months from 1st June till 31st August, taking the total period of applicability of the measures to six months. That is from 1st March 
to 31st August 2020. The lending institutions are being permitted to restore the margins. Now, this is another announcement which I would like uh, to draw your attention to. The lending institutions are being permitted, I mean, not only with regard to uh, working capital, we are extending the time limit uh, by another three months, but the lending institutions are being permitted to restore the margins for working capital to their original levels by 31st March 2020. This is one area where we had given three months time now. We are now giving time uh, that the, you know, the uh, uh, margins which the reduced margins, you know, that will be restored by 31st March, which will make it easier for borrowers to sort of uh, manage their finances, manage their cash flow in a gradual manner. Similarly, the measures pertaining to reassessment of working capital cycle are being extended up to 31st March 2021. Additionally, it has been decided to permit lending institutions to convert the accumulated interest on working capital facilities over the total deferment period of six months, that is from 1st March to 31st August, into a funded interest term loan, which shall be fully repaid during the course of the current financial year ending 31st March 2021. Now this is one area where we had received a lot of representations, not only from banks but also from the real sector borrowers. They were saying that the earlier deferment of interest which RBI had permitted, that meant that the entire interest component, the entire interest accumulate, the entire accumulated interest during the three months moratorium had to be sort of paid back to the bank in one shot. Obviously, it was posing problems in cash flow management for the various uh, borrowers, for the various borrowing entities. So taking this into account, we have now decided that it will be converted into, you know, the uh, deferment of the working capital during the six months period. They will be converted into a funded interest term loan, which will be fully repaid during the course of the current year, that is during the next few months, and the payment shall be completed by 31st March. This will provide considerable amount of ease and this will facilitate easier cash flow management by the borrowing entities. In view of the current difficulty in raising resources from capital markets, the group exposure limit of banks is being increased from 25% to 30% of eligible capital base for enabling the corporates to meet their funding requirement from banks. The increased limit will be applicable up to June 30th, 2021. The last set of measures, they relate to easing the financial constraints faced by the state government, and there is one announcement. Uh, in order to ease the uh, bond redemption pressure on the states, uh, it has been decided to relax the rules governing the withdrawal from the Consolidated Sinking Fund, that is CSF, uh, while at the same time ensuring that depletion of fund balance is done 